we'd been dealing with CRT TVs for the better part of over 70 years before other panel options finally started becoming commercially available. LCD TVs were gaining traction due to them being more power efficient than CRTs, as well as being much better at saving space at home. But early LCD TVs came with a myriad of issues regarding picture quality contrast and viewing angles being the biggest problems with this technology. Now with the introduction of plasma TVs, we took one giant step forward. Plasma TVs could also be thinner than CRTs, but offer nigh infinite viewing angles and much better color reproduction than LCDs, including very inky blacks. In spite of all of these improvements, plasma TVs were quickly forgotten and almost nobody has looked back. In this mini documentary, we will explore how plasma TVs came about how they work, their popularity, and why they were quickly forgotten. Let's dive in. The idea behind the plasma screen TV existed since July of 1964, when two professors at the University of Illinois, Donald Bitzer and Gene Slotow, came up with a prototype. Now, this development came as an alternative to the already existent cathode ray tube or CRT television, as these TVs are not the best at displaying computer graphics. However, this was only a prototype, and unfortunately, it was far from ready to be a commercially available product. The development of plasma screen TVs was further stunted when liquid crystal displays or LCDs started hitting the market, as they already made the idea behind making TVs flatter and thinner possible. But that couldn't mean that there was no room for plasma technology to be implemented. LCD TVs have been commercially available since 1988, with the introduction of Sharp's 14-inch LCD TV. But this technology came with a lot of issues that caused consumers to not rush into purchasing one for the coming years. Now, for instance, LCD TVs didn't have the best color contrast in comparison with the already mature CRT ecosystem. These TVs were also susceptible to backlight bleed, where the corners of the display would begin to bleed a lot more light, which would severely wash out the colors in those areas. There were also issues with slow response times, which could cause motion blur that many people, particularly gamers, were not fans of. Now, from my experience, viewing angles were definitely another concern, as unless you were watching TV from dead center, then the image would begin to wash out. Not very good in a group setting. All of these were issues that CRT owners didn't have to deal with. However, in 1997, we finally saw the first commercially available plasma screen TV, and it came about to compete with the relatively new LCD market and the CRT market. Plasma TVs were set to address most of the problems with early LCDs while addressing those of CRT TVs. So the question arose, will plasma TVs change the home entertainment market forever? If you recall from a previous video on CRT TVs, those relied on electron guns that would shoot a beam that goes from the top left corner of the screen and then draws parts of the image, then goes down in rows until it reaches the bottom right. It does it so quickly that our eyes don't see the beam moving, but instead we see a fully realized image. These TVs had to be so big, heavy, and even deep because of this technology as it needed a bigger system the larger you wanted the screen to be. Eventually, you'd reach a size limit because then these would just take up too much space on the Z-axis more specifically and simply wasn't practical. Now that's part of the reason why CRTs were limited to 43 inches max, as well as it just becoming more difficult to have a tube in place that could properly scan every corner of the display 50 to 60 times per second. The larger it gets, the harder that would theoretically become. However, plasma screen TVs work much differently, which allows for a lot more flexibility in its size. These displays use three fast-acting fluorescent cells, one in each primary color, and then it fires them as needed to create a picture. Plasma itself is an electrically conductive gas with both positive and negative ions. They continue colliding until they produce an ultraviolet light that is invisible. This light is then merged with phosphate materials from within, and these are the lights that become visible. Due to the lack of a tube and an electron gun, plasma TVs tend to be much, much thinner than their CRT counterparts, which is an advantage that they share with LCD TVs. But because of the technology behind plasma TVs, they could achieve a much nicer image quality when compared to LCD TVs. Now, plasma screens can achieve much darker tones, much closer to pitch black, which helped a lot with the contrast, which allows the colors to really pop and just look 
much richer and well-defined when compared to LCDs. Plasma TVs even offer better scaling options for working with different resolutions, usually from the native one going down, making this a considerably better option for gaming due to the fact that many game consoles tend to run at awkward resolutions that don't always scale very well on LCDs. Latency was also much, much lower on plasma screens. There was also a huge advantage when it came to viewing angles, as many LCD TVs at the time required you to be as centered as possible to get the best image. So plasma TVs look great from just about every viewing angle, which is a really powerful characteristic. There were many benefits to going with plasma TVs over LCDs, and they were definitely attractive enough to ensure that many people went with plasmas for the foreseeable future, as long as they could afford it. However, the problems with plasma TVs were becoming glaringly obvious, as LCD technology improved very quickly. Plasma TVs were overshadowed dramatically by consistent developments in LCD technology. This is significant because LCD TVs are cheaper to manufacture, and manufacturers eventually improved on many of the things that were drawbacks when they first became commercially available. Backlight bleeding simply wasn't nearly as severe over the years, and they've even improved viewing angles as well as colors and contrast, meaning that many times LCD TVs looked better next to plasma TVs. This is more so true when it comes to really bright environments, where an LCD TV would still get bright enough to compensate in those scenarios, when the plasma screens struggled. When it comes to plasma TVs, there are two major problems with this technology. Number one, these TVs would generate a lot of heat, which could be felt if you sat close enough to it, and it would be to an uncomfortable degree. And number two, these TVs were much more expensive to run. That's because plasma TVs consume a lot more energy over time than LCD TVs, which only became more efficient with time. But this became an even bigger issue if you wanted to go for a bigger TV, because the larger the panel, then the more energy it requires to run, and the more expensive your bill becomes. This wasn't something everyone could afford afford to have, even if the initial cost of the TV wasn't really that bad in some cases. It is also important to note that unlike plasma TVs, LCD continued evolving and becoming LED later on, with technology such as OLED, QLED, and even mini-LED becoming much more prominent today all of which offer all of the benefits of plasma TVs, with those of which even LCDs without incurring many of the drawbacks that came with either. And of course, there were issues with burn-in on plasma TVs. These issues were not really extremely common, as the everyday person who is watching moving images at all times probably won't run into this problem. But if you were someone who would constantly watch the news, for example, then those static images would begin to leave their mark over a very long period of time. It's still unlikely to happen to the average person, but it was possible, and some people still experienced it. Not to mention that if you went shopping for TVs in person and you were looking at the TVs on display, then your chances of running into a plasma TV with burn-in was much more likely due to the fact that these displays were usually looping the same content consistently for days, weeks, and even months at a time. And finally, LCD TVs were cheaper to manufacture due to the fact that it was mass-produced in much greater numbers and these panels only got cheaper and cheaper to make over time. It made it a lot easier for people to transition away from CRT TVs, which most people still had in the early 2000s, much more affordably than before. Plasma TVs remained as a more luxury alternative, and that stopped making sense after a while due to the constant improvements to LCDs. While many plasma TVs were capable of achieving 1920x1080 resolutions, they definitely struggled to achieve higher ones such as 4K, which were not a problem for LCD TVs. This meant that they could support much more modern content at that time and even into the future. Panasonic did actually create a massive 152-inch 4K plasma TV prototype which looked absolutely amazing at the time, but it was never really commercially available, likely due to the fact that it would consume far too much power to function. After that, there were hardly any more attempts at plasma. Simply put, plasma TVs just weren't so sought after anymore and were being left behind in favor of emerging technologies. Plasma was a technology that was so incredible upon its commercial availability and it left many consumers in absolute awe. I remember when they started becoming more available, and everyone talking about the impressiveness of these panels and how they really wanted one. But leaning into the early 2010s, this was about the time that I stopped hearing all that much about these TVs. By the early 
early 2010s, the majority of people had already upgraded to a flat screen LCD at the very least. And before I even knew it, many people got access to OLED TVs, a technology that offers almost every benefit of LCD and plasma in a single package. Plasma TVs were forgotten by most very, very quickly. It is unfortunate that plasma TVs simply couldn't continue being made due to the limitations around that technology and how quickly LCD evolved and matured. So today, there are still people who use their plasma TVs that they purchased years ago, but the vast majority of people have fully transitioned to using LCD TVs, whether it is the LED variant or OLED or even QLED. There are so many options out on the market now, and it is safe to say that not many people miss having plasmas at home. As interesting as plasma TVs were, the LCD technology absolutely deserves its own mini-documentary, as there is so much more to discuss there. So subscribe so that you don't miss it when that video eventually comes out. Now thank you so much for watching, leave your suggestions in the comments for future bite-sized documentaries, and until next time.